It is holiday time here in New York, as you can tell from the festivities behind me. But this Thanksgiving that just passed, the immortal Joe McNally asked me, of all people, to go teach a workshop with him in London for Nikon UK. Pro Photo got involved, bada bing, huh? Manfrotto stopped by. We had really great attendees, incredible talent to work with, an amazing space to shoot in. It sounds amazing, but this was not the way I wanted to put this video together. Some stuff happened. Hopefully I can make it cohesive and coherent. Stick around. It was a really cool trip, but also was a bit of a tough one too. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this one's a good watch. <laughs> hey, what's going on? My name is Seth Miranda. I'm a pro photographer here in New York. If you're watching this particular video, you probably already know that, but if you're into photo nerd stuff, uh, this is a good channel for you. Lighting, gear chats, all that stuff. Hit subscribe. And let's talk about my latest adventure in the photo nerd world, going to London with the ever legendary Joe McNally. Yeah, Joe pulled up in a DeLorean and he was like, Seth, get in, we've got to go back to the future. No, I'm just kidding. He uh, called me up and said, hey, I'm doing a workshop I do every year in London. Would you want to come along and teach it with me and co-instruct? And I was like, what? Uh, yeah, it took me like 0 0.037 seconds to say yes, and I was all in. Uh, you know, some planning took place. I got a plane ticket during Thanksgiving to get over to London. There's only two planes left to get out of here. Uh, and I got myself a hotel room and we just went, went for it. So <laughs> the trip was pretty tough. I was on a six hour delay getting in plus the time difference, which means I lost like a total day. All right, it is 5.30 in the morning here at JFK Airport here in New York. I just got through pre-check security and I'm on my way to London to hang out with Joe McNally and teach a two-day workshop for Nikon UK and Pro Photo is going to be there as well. So I didn't have to carry a lot of gear, but I still wanted to have some of my own gear and be prepared in case I get into something else because I'm not just going to be there for the two days for the workshop. Joe's always got something cranking in his head. I might organize something, might go shoot something. I don't know. You just always want to be prepared. And even though this might sound like a crazy gear list, for some people, this is light for me. So in my Wandered Provoke 31, I have a Nikon Z9, a 24 to 120 F4 lens, which is a nice all around lens. You guys seem to use that a lot. You can take care of anything I need pretty much, but I also brought the 85 millimeter 1.2 for that special type look. Uh, I really like the way that lens shoots. So I brought it just in case I wanted a, a special type look instead of just an all around lens. And uh, I said to myself, I'm a lighting guy, I gotta bring some kind of lights. So in here I've got a Profoto A10 on-camera speed light, which also doubles as a remote, which is a redundancy in case my actual remote goes down or something happens. I have some ability to trigger lights, and yes, I brought lights because inside my Think Tank Security V3, which is my favorite roller case, uh, I have two Profoto A2s, which are 100 watt second little soda can lights. I only brought one modifier. I didn't bring a whole grip case. I only have the small OctaClick magnetic mount OctaBank, which is nice to have. It's really easy to pack and nice and small, and it gives me a modifier. But I also have a Matthews Murf stand, which is my favorite travel stand. If you haven't seen my video about travel stands, I'll put a link down below, but check out why I like that stand so much. And I even brought an extender for it, which is a pole that can actually socket onto the top of that if I want, but it's also a pole if I want someone to hold the light and just boom it out, I can do that as well. So that's what's going on with just the gear. Of course, I have my laptop tethering stuff. I even have my Fujifilm X100B just for fun in case I want to just go and shoot in the street or something like that. I don't know, but I brought it with me because it's just a fun camera and I love that camera. Just so you guys know why the Security V3 is one of my favorite roller cases to travel with, it's carry-on size, but it's the most internal space I've found out there. And it's also super well built and Think Tank has been a part of my world forever. It's never let me down and I have cases that have been around for years and have been beaten to hell and are still unbelievably in good shape. So that's my reason for that. Uh, other than that, I'm really looking forward to get out of New York for a minute. I'm a little burnt out and I get to go hang out with some people I've been talking to forever but never really met, like the people at Grays of Westminster and I get to hang out with Richie finally. Yeah, so uh, if Joe McNally calls me and tells me he's putting my, his name on my back, I'm going to do everything I can not to embarrass this guy and come through for him. And it's going to be pretty fun to teach a two-day workshop with a legend. So this is a pretty big deal for me. And hopefully I can remember to take this out of my pocket and bring you along with me whenever I can. So let's see what happens over there. And that's not even the craziest thing. Halfway through the trip, my phone burnt out which means I lost a lot of the footage and I was kind of without a map, couldn't even tell the time, couldn't call Ubers or car services or anything. 
Uh, and, and let me tell you, London is a circle of spaghetti if you want to try to navigate it. With no phone, I had no map, and I couldn't call like an Uber, so I would just write the address of the hotel I was staying at on my arm with a Sharpie and just jump into random cabs and tell them to get me there so I get back to some home base. Also wrote my flight information all over my arm because I was able to find that out through browser somewhere, but my arm was full of Sharpie at the end of this trip, full of things I just needed to remember because I couldn't put them in my phone. It's not my first time there, but I definitely do not know that city too well. Last time I was there, I actually got a safety pin tattooed on me. This time, I just wanted to kind of hang out and really enjoy the city. It was one of the few times I wasn't working nonstop, but I also couldn't really get around too easily without knowing where I was going either. So anyway, my phone fried. Yeah, so in my pocket, it got extremely hot. I pull out my phone and it is bright white, the screen. I mean, brighter than I've ever seen it, which makes me think they throttle the brightness of our screen so that they can't go all the way. It's probably like a durability uh, safety thing that they got built in. Five in the morning and my phone is doing this and melting in my hands and I'm trying to get into phone recovery mode. And I'm praying that this magic loading bar will fix all my problems while I'm over here. Not in my country with still half of this workshop to go and having to get home. Oh my gosh, please work. Anyway, uh, obviously it didn't work. My phone fried out and I plugged into my laptop trying to save it. I tried to put in a bug update fix. It wouldn't even accept it. And then I said in a last ditch effort, I'll just zero out the phone. So at least I'll have that as a tool for me to get through the rest of this trip, including getting back home. Because what you might not be realizing is I needed two factor authentication to get through anything. Yeah, so I was logged out of everything, email, all my accounts, everything. I couldn't get into anything except I had one browser that was still able to get me into Instagram for some reason. So I, I put up a post that said, hey, you're probably not gonna find me for a few days. Uh, that's being said, because I zeroed out the phone, I lost all my supplemental footage and I was filming with both this DJI Osmo Pocket 3 and my phone. And I gotta tell you, uh, this isn't the first phone to fry on me and all the people that tell me that phones are gonna take over our industry, I find it hard to believe, especially when in my personal experience, phones are the most unreliable tool I've ever had for documenting things or just filming. Yeah, it's great to have on you. It's super convenient. There's definitely advantages, but it, it, it's not the most reliable. I'll just say in my personal experience. Anyway, not gonna go to that rabbit hole. If you guys want me to do a video about what I think about phones in our industry, hit me with a comment down below, I'll, uh, I'll check it out. Maybe I'll do it, I don't know. Either way, we had a great time in London regardless. My whole goal was to take this out and just talk to you through the entire trip. The problem was that I kept getting into issues that I kept forgetting about it. It wasn't the first thing in my mind. I was just trying to get through the trip and stuff like that. And, you know, it's just hard to do these if you're not that type of person, and I'm not. So I'm sorry about that. However, I do want to say a special thanks to Ricci because that guy was picking my pocket to pull this camera out of my, out of my pants while I was doing stuff at the workshop just so I could have B-roll to make this video for you guys. So huge, huge thanks to the elusive and ever resourceful Ricci. I'll put a link down to his channel down below. If you're a Nikon shooter, it's a must to subscribe to his channel for sure. Uh, so let's talk about what happened, right? In London, I got to go hang out with Grey's of Westminster, which is an amazing store. It's like the end all of Nikon, exclusively sells Nikon, but it gets like rare, exclusive, one of a kind, you know, pieces. You get to see the awards, the statues, all the old school ads. You really feel every year of the century that Nikon has been around from this store. And it's more than a store. It's really kind of like a, like a museum. And Gray himself, an incredible wealth of knowledge in this industry. And when you hear him talk, it's just like you got, you just can't stop. Uh, you can't, you can't help but stop whatever you're doing. Just listen to him. Incredible stories about really well-known people in this world coming through a shop and just what Nikon has done. The images that have been shot throughout our history through a Nikon lens on Nikon cameras, it, you feel it in that shop. So if you're a photo nerd, stop by that shop. Uh, they have a great channel as well. I'll put a link to that because me and Joe actually got to be on their channel for a podcast with Con and Becky who have built that channel and they, they did a great job of doing it. And it was a lot of fun to sit down and talk for a while. The, the final podcast is like an hour, but I think we went almost two hours. It was just a lot of fun. We could have gone on forever. And I always love hanging out with Joe. And that being said, hanging out with Joe in London, just like chilling, 
awesome, man. I got to say, it, it's really humbling to have a guy like that. I consider being a friend and not just some guy I'll assist or something like that. And that being said, he wouldn't let me be an assistant on this workshop. He's like, no, you're, you're instructing. You're going to do demos. Stop picking up my lights and moving them. Like, go do what I'm doing. You're at level. And that was absolutely incredible. To uh, the, I don't even know how to describe it. And I'm very fortunate to have been put in that position. So, Joe, thank you so much. You know how much you mean to me and, and how much you've done for me. I, can't, I, I can never repay you, man. Uh, that, all that said, the venue was incredible that we shot at. This was endless. I mean, you felt like this place went on forever and every room was different and there was so many props. It was built for like shooting, you know what I mean? It was definitely, you know, a little Instagrammy, but it was an endless playground for these attendees to just get creative and go after it. They had all the gear they could want. Z9, Z8s everywhere. All the pro photo lights, A2s flying, B10Xs, B10X pluses, D2, 1000 watt second strobes, endless mods. I mean, it was just flying everywhere. And then they had me and Joe coming around and helping them actually get to an end result they were trying to get to. You know, they had the, the intent in their head. They didn't just go and shoot like crazy. They're like, I want to do this. How can I do that? I saw you do this before. How can I do something similar? And it was just, you know, constant. Two days, eight hours a piece really awesome and you know neil and ricci from nikon put together a great workshop dave and paul from pro photo really kept everybody outfitted and moving and troubleshot any issue they might have had man photo stopped by luke and steve were just kind of chilling and helping people out with what you know they've seen us use over the years it was really really cool and i think that everybody got great shots just amazing vibes that nobody was caring about what you would mainly think our, our industry is right now, which is like trolls caring about stuff they bought. No, it was all about the shot. And uh, it was really fun doing a demo for them. They were really obsessed with gels for some reason. I don't know why. Gels are super fun. We'll go do a demo on gels. So that's what I did. Me and Joe actually did two different gel demos, which I think was super important to show similar techniques, two different methods and idea and philosophies about approaching it, right? So that was really cool. Literally just walked in. What? Not bad, man. This is gonna be a two day workshop with skylights. Very cool. Bunch of weird textures. Very cool. A bunch of props that they got all over the place. Very cool. Old man McNally. Very cool. Oh my God. Neil from Nikon. And a, there's a ton of space. What's really cool is when you have skylights like this, ever-changing light, as the day goes on, we can make different shots in the same spaces in different tones, right? Sorry if this vlog sucks. So, Joe. Seth. We've been here for a day and a half now. Yes. How's the workshop going? <laughs> I would say it's going fantastic, Seth. How about your assessment? What do you think? It's been astonishing to work with a great talent like Joe McNally. <laughs> I learned so much. What's the one? I learned so much from Joe every time we work together. <laughs> no, no, we're having, we're rocking and rolling here in the UK and just having a blast. We have some terrific folks. We have terrific talent, and this uh, location is off the charts. Bananas. So all thanks to Nikon UK. Uh, working with them is always a pleasure, and we get a lot of great stuff done. It's fun. Yeah, like reach you over here. I mean, if you just do this, hey, How you doing? look at this guy. Oh he exists. He exists. He, he really exists. exists. Ricci lives, you know? I mean, we think that he's just some sort of computer program in the background sending out coherent emails, you know, and, and using some sort look. of like chat AI, like, you know, kind of thing, you know? Oh yeah, okay, you guys are really good and the uh, Plena is an excellent lens. Okay, you know, but no, he's a real human being. Apparently. Apparently, apparently yeah. Yeah. much more than apparently. Yeah. Ricci is a great guy. And these two guys, between Seth and Ricci, there's more Nikon knowledge in these That's two true. in these two heads. Oh no, I just compl Nikon complained to him and he makes things happen. <laughs> yeah. I try it. But I swear to God, if I have a question about literally anything Nikon, I go to these guys because they really know their stuff, you know. And uh, well, Seth knows a lot of stuff about a lot of stuff. Richie is an encyclopedia of the Nikon system. Joe gets paid every time he says that, and I'm going broke. So, <laughs> oh, I didn't know I had to pay him for that. <laughs> you know, what do you mean you didn't have to? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, God, at least lunch. At least lunch, man. Maybe later. All right. How long have you been doing these workshops? 
I've worked with um, Nikon School over here probably about 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. We used to have a storefront, which was amazing to work out of. But of course, COVID kind of trampled over a lot of things. And now we always work in remote locations, which has its own beauty because you're always doing different stuff. Yeah. It's been pretty crazy. When you asked me to do this, it's like, I got to teach next to Joe. <laughs> Yeah, but that's the thing, you know, there's the thing. They're, the the students are getting the benefit of yin and yang here, okay? We light in different ways. We approach subject matter in different ways. So we both did demonstrations in each day of the workshop that gives these folks a completely different perspective on how to approach lighting, you know, the human face, the scene, etc. Yeah, because I, I think we both agree, like, while there's logic to things, and yes, there is techniques, but there's no right answer. Mm -hmm. And so you're just giving more of your point of view mixed with the technical. Right. And I think the point of view is the hardest thing to develop as a photographer because there is no answer to that, right? You have to kind of find it and stick to it and develop it. Exactly. I always tell folks when I'm teaching lighting, like, yeah, this is just what I'm showing you one way of maybe a thousand ways to go about this situation. It's like cooking. I always say it's like cooking, you know, you, you, to your taste. Is there a right or wrong? As Seth just said, there isn't a right or wrong, really. Yeah. It's, and I got to say, it's pretty cool. Like everyone's just psyched to shoot. There's no like... Oh, did you buy that? Right. There's no toxic, weird. You think that's what the photo world is. It's just a bunch of like trolley commenting stuff. But here's where you really get to be like, people just want to shoot cool shit. Yeah. Yeah. And they're experimenting with color, which is great. And also lens use and a uh, big shout out to Profoto. Uh, they came along on this, on this workshop and they just ramped it up for us. We've got A2s, we've got B10 X pluses, and we've got, um, D2s as well, yeah. plug-in lights. And so we've got power galore, and tendons light mods. shaper. I mean, you know, let's take a look over there. I mean, check that out over there. Oh, that's the Pro Photo repository. Oh, uh, all the battery charges you can want. No, everyone's using all the gear in here. <laughs> like, it's not just battery charges over there, I swear. <laughs> and oh, these we've guys. Got, we got Manfrotto in the house. Hey, Manfrotto is in the house. Be yeah. awkward, guys. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> the, you know, all their light shaping technology, camera supports, tripods, everything. They came down to sort of take a look, advise, help us out, all that sort of stuff. I tell you, if there's been a, a thing, a, a small piece of kit, I don't know if you agree, Seth, that has come along the last few years. Halo, Halo, the Halo, Halo. The Halo. <laughs> the Halo. The Halo is freaking brilliant. Beam. It's freaking brilliant, you yeah. know, because it folds down into something smaller than a lunchbox and then it expands out into this beautifully effective light source. Yeah, funny enough, I have three videos on that. Link below. See, Joe, I'm going to teach you how to do that. Okay, yeah. Right, so. yeah. I don't have three videos on it. Um, <laughs> he just, only has a lifetime legendary <laughs> body of work. I just, <laughs> I just use this stuff and say, hey, yeah, this is a good thing. You know? You, know? <laughs> you did a good thing. Hey, you guys, you boys, you did a good thing. You know, nice job, fellow. Oh, oh, man. Right. So, oh, I such a beautiful, I love you guys. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? Hey, what are you doing? It's, a, it's an Italian company, so I'm trying to do my best here. <laughs> Try, okay, a week of this. <laughs> Hey, what's your problem? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, listen, I just, while I got you on it, I just want to say like, this guy, it does so much for me and it does so much for this whole photo community and our industry, but he didn't have to bring me here. He didn't have to put my name on this and he did. And I can't thank him enough for that. So, I mean, Joe, like you put your name on my back. I got to do everything I can not to embarrass you. I hope I didn't. That's my, that's my benchmark. <laughs> don't embarrass Joe. So hopefully we got there. Uh, we're way past that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Well, no, it's been a great team. It's it's wonderful to teach with Seth and uh, and this is the photo community at work, right? Because we've got Nikon here. Seth and I are teaching, but we've also got Pro Photo in the mix in a major way. We've got Manfrotto here, yeah. and so I think people chipping in resources for the education of all of us involved in camera work is a beautiful thing. Because that thing in your hand is nothing if you don't know what you're doing with it, right? Most important firmware is updating right here. <laughs> Good, you good like point. That? Uh, that's good. That's it's going to be in his next book. Watch yeah, it. And yeah. he's going to say, well, I'm kind of done writing books. It's going to be in his next book. <laughs> <laughs> I love Joe. The fact that the workshop was two days, meaning it was eight hours twice over, I think the attendees and me and Joe were kind of able to almost have a warm-up day and then marinate on it overnight and then think of some cool stuff to do the second day. So that's also an advantage of doing this type of format. Uh, but 
I, I got to say the best part of it was just the energy of it. You know, people just wanted to get out there and shoot some cool stuff and they were getting it, you know, and I'm glad they felt it was worthwhile. The talent was incredible as well. Let's not forget about Monique, uh, Sophia, Steve, Venus, all these really awesome models who came through to, and just kept the energy up and just stayed with everybody. And, you know, that's a big part of it. You can have all the equipment you want. You can have all the nice ideas in, that you could ever think of. But if the energy is in there and the chemistry with the people working together isn't there, you've got nothing, right? So it was really uh, nice to get in the trenches with Joe for a change. And uh, even though I, I lost a lot of my footage, I did get to salvage some stuff from Instagram. So if you didn't know, you can go on Instagram, go into your archives that you've posted in stories and re-download some stuff. The things I really wanted to put in this video, I didn't share on stories because I didn't, you know, that was the point of it was to make it for this video. That said, whatever. I hope this video is some sort of coherent. Uh, I'm trying guys, I'm not a vlog guy. However, if you are into this style, I do have some other vlogs from Shutterfest where I taught there over the years or uh, the seven hour demo that I did for Imaging USA, which was crazy. Uh, I put a vlog together for that. So there's a, a playlist down below if you guys wanna hit. There's 10 tons of links down below for you to go play with. Uh, but if this was something you're into, please hit like. If there's anything you guys wanna ask me about the trip, hit me with a comment down below. I'll do my best to answer it. You know, that's where you guys can just have a community as well. And as well as the comments, my Discord. So if you're into this photo nerd stuff and you wanna hang out with some really cool people 24 seven, troubleshooting things, talk about gear, share work, all that stuff, hit the Discord link down below and come join. It's been great and we're, at the time of recording this, we're hitting 900 members in there. At, and think of it as like the cream of the crop of the photo community out there online. I'm just kidding, but they really are some great people. I'm thankful for every one of them. But if this was uh, your type of video, go ahead and subscribe and uh, I will uh, try to put out some more videos like this. That said, uh, we just passed over 30,000 subscribers on this channel, and I cannot believe that that just happened. So before I close out the video, I just wanna give you all a huge thank you for sticking with me, because I hope you feel like this channel is as much yours as it is mine. I could talk into a void, or I can have an audience that's kind of engaging back and we kind of work together to make this channel worthwhile for everyone involved, right? Me, you, and just people passing by. So thank you so much for helping me hit 30K and I will see you guys on the next one later.